Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. I'm Hilmarie Hutchison, and today I am so excited to have Ali Martin as my guest on the show. Ali is a visibility expert and owner of Fame and Fortune. She works with female entrepreneurs to elevate their brand and gain credibility and cash, I like that, through proactive public relations and strategic social media. Ali, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. I am honored to be here, Hill Marie. Thank you so much for having me. Some of our listeners probably know who you are already, especially since you have your own podcast. But for those who don't, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, I am based in Shelbyville, Kentucky, over in the States, and I work primarily with female entrepreneurs on their public relations and their social media. I've been doing this for three years now. Prior to that, I most notably did public relations for Amazon for the Southeast region of the United States. I've gotten to work with some really large companies, and now I really enjoy working with some small startup businesses and helping them grow that visibility that we all know we need. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So how did you then move from Amazon to opening or working or creating fame and fortune? What is that all about? I actually went through two different layoffs. Amazon kind of restructured and shuffled positions around. And so I went through a layoff and I joined another large company called Kendra Scott and was in their marketing and public relations department almost to the day a year later, the exact same thing happened there. After having that happen to me twice in a matter of one year, I really started to look around and go, okay, what is God trying to tell me? Where am I really supposed to go next? This just doesn't seem to be working. I really did take that time to reflect on maybe my strengths and and really what made me happy. And it was no longer about just finding another job because I realized that you can work for some of the largest companies in the world, the most stable companies in the world, and yet they would still endure restructurings, layoffs, there's things that happen. And so I had a number of friends and colleagues that encouraged me to go out on my own because I had been doing it for almost 15 years at this point. And they said, you know what you need to do. You can do it for many businesses instead of doing it for just one. And I'm going to be honest, if I hadn't gone through those layoffs, I don't think I would have ever gone out on my own and started Fame and Fortune because I really liked that stability. I liked that security that I thought I had. And I never would have thrown it all away to take a chance. I really had to be forced into it, which I really felt like I was. But I'm so glad that I took that chance and said, okay, I'm not going to look for a job anymore. I'm going to go down this path. And really, it picked up very quickly. I started with just a few jobs here and there, helping different friends that were working on projects that I could help with their visibility. And then word just spread through word of mouth and it grew from there. So I'm blown away every Every day when I think back to how it all came to be. But there's times where I go, man, I wish I would have started this so much sooner than I did. But it's really cool to kind of look back and see that journey that I went through. I love the name also, Fame and Fortune. Is there a story behind that? Yep, there really is. Actually, it's a pretty funny story. I actually was having lunch with my grandmother. She checked in with me quite often throughout this process because she was worried about me. She realized that, you know, when you do go through a series of layoffs, that it really can be a blow to your ego and to your self-esteem. And so she would check in with me and we actually went to lunch and I told her about this idea. I said, I keep getting encouraged by friends to start my own business. And I really feel like public relations and social media are what I am meant to continue to do. And she said, so really what you're doing is getting them fame. And as a result, you're getting them fortune. And I said, yeah, that's right. She said, well, your website needs to be, I want fame fortune that was available. It's actually kind of funny that she came up with all of this because this is a lady who has never turned on a computer a day in her life. She does not operate technology. She doesn't even know how all that works. So the fact that she even had the foresight to give me the 
suggestion of what the website should be. I just went with it because I was like, wow, this is brilliant. Leave it to Nana to take it back to the basics and really just remind me, like, keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. Really try to spell out what's going to happen when they work with you. So that's how Fame and Fortune, the name, came to be. I love that story. That's brilliant. You had no experience running a small business. You had been with, as you said, uh, very large corporations. So what were some of the challenges you had in setting up Fame and Fortune? Really the managing the growth but also having the foresight to see what's coming down the road is a challenge that I face. And I think a lot of other entrepreneurs face as you are growing a team. It's really this idea of knowing what's going to come down the road so that you have that stability in front of you to pass down to your team, but also knowing that you need to be foreshadowing and kind of forecasting what's coming down the road as far as business-wise. That always seemed to be the challenge because there were times of very fast growth that it was hard to manage, hard to keep up with. There's also times where with the pandemic, things intensified as far as needs for our current clients, but then everybody that was a potential client really did slow down and stall. Really managing those ebbs and flows of growth and demand and making sure you have enough team members there to support your clients, but while also you know making smart business decisions. That's really been the biggest struggle for me and just managing the needs back and forth on that end. Sure. And certainly a learning curve going into creating a small business. You're absolutely right. There are things that you never knew that business owners had to deal with. And luckily, my husband owned and owns and started his small business about two years before I started mine. And so I did actually see a lot of those challenges, mainly just paperwork and really the nuances that go along with setting up taxes and all of those things. I really did get to see a lot of that, but I still had no idea what I was walking into. And you just kind of learn along the way. You either find good mentors that you're able to learn from and they're able to pour into you, or you're able to spend the time needed to research it on your own, take it step by step. But I will say that's really one of those things where you kind of look back and you are just so proud of yourself for what you have been able to teach yourself, even with an MBA from a university. These are things they don't teach you. You have to have that book smart, but you need to have a little bit of that street smart too that you pick up along the way. So it is always a learning curve. It will continue to be, I'm sure. With Fame and Fortune, are you focused specifically only on female entrepreneurs? Yes, that's primarily who we work with. Do you ever consider taking on any other kinds of companies? We do. Yeah, we definitely are open to other types of companies and work with them even currently. We just really have a sweet spot for being able to tap into a female entrepreneur's brain and really be able to help her tell that story that's often hard for women to tell. We don't want to come across as being bragger. We don't want people to think that we are just too self-confident. So we will reserve some of those moments that need to be shouted from the rooftop. We will be quiet when we really probably should be speaking up. So having that cheerleader that I feel like fame and fortune is for so many female entrepreneurs, we can really pull that out of them and educate them on the reasons why it's important to be telling these stories, why it's important for them to speak up, how to speak up appropriately. I just don't see that being as much of a challenge for males or for corporate Corporations that have a large team. We certainly work with them. We just find a lot of gratification in being able to work with those women and allow them to see this transformation that they've gone under when they realize that speaking out can actually help their business and not hurt it. And you're speaking from experience, which does also help. What is the one piece of advice you would give to an aspiring female entrepreneur? The way that I approach visibility, it is the most impactful and quickest way to change the trajectory of how people view you and your business. And the reason it does that is because there's so much trust and credibility that goes behind some of the largest media outlets out there. And so public relations, visibility should be one of the most important 
areas that you focus on, whether you're just starting out, whether you've been in business for years, because this is how you can change people's perception of you. And that is so powerful. I just think it's really cool because I could post on my own social media channels, Allie Martin, she's the greatest in the world. She's really great at getting visibility for female business owners. Some people might see that and go, okay, she's crazy. Or some people might go, good for her. Like, yes, that's great. But if the New York Times makes a article about me, they do a feature on me. Headline is, Allie Martin is a visibility expert. Every single person that reads that article is going to believe it because of the credibility behind that publication. It really can just be so impactful in how your business operates. And so I just think more people tend to focus on what is the latest and greatest social media platform they need to be on. Do they need to be running ads? What does their logo need to look like? There's a lot of things that can draw your attention as an entrepreneur and it can sidetrack you from really what's going to make a difference in your business and and give you that cash that you're we're all after and really that to me is visibility I think that's excellent advice as well can we talk a little bit about your podcast selfish so prior to my time at Amazon I worked in the spa industry actually for the International Spa Association and it is as cool as you would think of a job I only had to leave it because I got married and moved I got to travel to spas around the world I worked with them on their public relations on their media stories uh, how they could get featured in top tier media outlets at the end of the day a lot of these larger resorts where you would stay for for maybe a week at a time, they would have speakers. Every resident that was there for the week would come over, sit in a lecture hall and get to hear from these speakers. And you kind of just do it because that's what's on the schedule for the day. But I found very quickly that these were amazing speakers and they were giving such great advice that I started recording it on my phone because I thought, gosh, everybody in my life needs to hear this. So I would listen to these speakers, record them on my phone, go up to them afterwards and ask them like, can I share this with friends and family? They'd say yes. And then somebody finally suggested to me, Allie, you can just have a podcast and interview these people and you'd probably get a lot better audio quality, be a lot less work. It just never dawned on me. As a result, I started Selfish and I really wanted to focus on how you can practice self-care as an entrepreneur. I wasn't an entrepreneur at the time, which is very ironic because I do believe that that podcast really helped give me that confidence I needed to start that business. I had all those friends and colleagues encouraging me, but I had reflected on the hundreds of episodes I had done previously on Selfish where I was interviewing entrepreneurs. They were talking to me about their self-care and I knew, wait, I've talked to all of these people before. They've all talked about their stories and how they became an entrepreneur. Why can't I? Really, this idea of marketing a podcast as well, that really allowed me to say, okay, I know how to market a podcast. I can market a business as well, let alone the, the, the knowledge that I had in marketing in general. All of those pieces fell into place the way they were supposed to. And I had imposter syndrome of who am I to, to do a podcast on self-care? I'm not that good at self-care, but I was learning along the way. And I think that's like the beauty of really good podcasts like this one that we're on right now. It's this idea that we are asking questions. We are curious about how we can improve ourselves, what we can be doing better. And just because we don't have all the answers doesn't make us the right host for the show. It actually makes us the perfect host because that really allows us to connect in with those listeners, allows them to say, yes, those are the questions on my mind too. What I'm curious about as well. So I give a lot of credit to Selfish for really pulling all these pieces together and making it easy for me to start Fame and Fortune. I hope if you're curious about how you can be practicing better self-care and marketing tips in general. They're all there on the selfish episodes. I love that you've faced these challenges. You've seen gaps and you've not shied away from them. You've said, okay, there's something there. I'm going to give it a try. I might not be an expert, but I'm going to give it a try. And it's turned out so well for you. So congratulations on both fame and fortune and on selfish. You've done so well. Well, thank you, Hilmarie. I appreciate that. Now we've come to the segment of our show where I will ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Our version of a game show. Are you ready? I'm ready. When are you the most productive? Morning. Okay. Who is your biggest inspiration? 
Oprah Winfrey, I know it's rapid fire, but I want to give some context. When I was in high school, we all had to put in our yearbooks of who our role model is. Somebody who took a TV show and failed so many times to even get to that TV show, but then has built this empire and has built a massive network from it. That is so inspiring to me. So I just love that she continues to evolve and grow. I just wanted to give a little background there, but Oprah Winfrey would be mine. Okay. Now, and I'm wondering if that same answer is going to be for the next question. Okay. You could have lunch or dinner with anyone in the world. Who would it be? Oh gosh. No, I am going to change my answer for this because I really think it would be Any president, past, present, I am so fascinated by the political world. I did get a political science degree along with broadcast journalism in my undergrad. I was not brave enough to go into the political world. I do think it's very brutal, but I'm still so fascinated by it. And I know that the president sees and experiences things that none of us will ever get to really understand. And so I think that would be so fascinating to find out more about that. How interesting. I love that. Last question here. What is one thing you do every day, no matter how busy you are? I'm really out in a very rural part of Kentucky, although many people's perception of Kentucky is probably farmland, horses, and I am surrounded by horses and cornfields. I walk my driveway. I have kind of a long driveway. My dog and I go out three times a day and we do quick laps on the driveway. And that's how I get my steps in. If I try to do it in the beginning of the day or I try to wait till the end, it never gets done. But if I can break it up into three little chunk size walks, then it's so much more enjoyable. It breaks up the day. And my dog, of course, is thrilled to be able to go on that walk as well. So that is something I do every single day. That was the end of the rapid fire so that was pretty easy now before we wrap up we would like to do our green pill moment what green pill advice would you give to your younger self the patience that i think we really lack as a younger generation and i'm thinking about myself coming out of college and really facing that idea that a lot of people that age 21 face and it's this idea of what am I going to do with my life? And I think there's so much pressure put on us at that age, even in high school, to get it right and to pick something that's going to dictate success for the rest of our lives. And I wish I would have known then what I know now in that it's really just a series of saying yes. It's a series of great opportunities that you're saying yes to and you're seeing them through to completion. Sometimes that's a year. Sometimes I guess that can even be a month. And then maybe you're meant to move on. I just pictured it as this idea where I had to have the perfect job and it was going to all line out the way it was supposed to. And I really hadn't considered this idea of maybe I'm just meant to say yes to what's in front of me, what's right for me right Right now, see it through, and then something else will come up. And that all leads to the next right thing that I'm supposed to do. That would put a whole lot of pressure off, I think, as a younger Allie to get it exactly right and to pick the major in college because I did have a mental breakdown at that point when the college application asked for my anticipated major. I have to figure it all out right here, right now. And that's a lot of pressure for somebody. So I hope if somebody's listening and that maybe is in that boat that I was in years ago, really trying to say like, what is next? What's the next right thing? You don't have to know that. Just look at the opportunities that are in front of you right now. Pick one of those and see it through. That's really the best advice that I can give. I think that's brilliant advice. So you don't have to plan out every step of your life. Just be open to opportunities. Be willing to say yes to those opportunities or challenges. And rather than be overwhelmed with having to plan the next 30, 40 years. I love that. I think that's excellent advice. Thank you. Did we miss anything? Is there anything else you wanted to share with our audience before we say goodbye today? I just want to encourage anybody that 
that maybe is an entrepreneur and they're focusing more on their visibility. Maybe they, after listening to this episode, they go, I haven't been focusing on my visibility. We can all get wrapped up in the accounting, the human resources, the finance things of our business. It's easy to overlook visibility or marketing. And so if you really want to take that next step, I would encourage you to just be authentic. Tell that truthful and unique story that you have to tell, whether that is on social media, whether that is on media features, but really be vulnerable and open up and start to tell your story because you have no idea the impact it can have on your business and can have on other people. Excellent advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. And again, thank you so much for being here today. It's been lovely talking with you and hearing your story. I love that. I'm sure our listeners are also going to be inspired by you and take the bull by the horns. Don't plan everything out. Just be ready to take on those challenges. Now, before we say goodbye, could you please tell our listeners where they can find and follow you? My website is the hub for everything. So that's IWantFameFortune.com. And you can find freebies, great resources there for any step of the entrepreneurial journey that you are on. Thank you again so much, Ali. I wish you fame and fortune and selfish all the very best. And for sure, we'll be following your journey as well. Oh, thank you so much. It was an honor. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.